Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are mastering the measure tool. We are going to be looking at the options that are available for bar lines in the document options. So let's actually go straight to it. Uh, I'm now I've got the document options here, and I'm in the bar line section. And this is fairly straightforward, but I'll sort of go through these things for you. Uh, at the top, we have uh, things that we can do to all bar lines, right? And uh, this is sort of how it's set up in Finale by default. The first, and the first, fourth, and fifth options are checked, and the second and third are unchecked. And um, it's fairly obvious what they do. If you uncheck display all bar lines, um, it will pretty much not display any bar line in your piece. So every single bar line and every single staff goes away. This would be a, a thing to do if you wanted to do something very unique uh, with custom bar lines and you just wanted to get rid of them, start over and just draw on your own, you could do it like that. Um, we have the next two options have to do with the close bar line at the end of each system. If I check that, what you'll see is you'll see the, the bar line get drawn all the way from the top to the bottom of the staff, despite the way the, um, the staffs are drawn or the bar lines are drawn in the middle of the system you see that now the the whole right side is closed this is sort of an older style of doing this i think um but uh this is not that uh, usual to see it like this anymore but you do have the option um, but we can also just do that for the last bar line of the piece so if we check this one here and click apply you won't see any changes on any system except the very last one where you have that final bar line so we can uh we can uh, tell Finale to only do it on the final bar line. Uh, right after that, we do have an option for final bar line at end of piece. And basically what this is doing is putting a final bar line there. Now, if you uncheck that, obviously you're going to get a normal bar line at the end of the piece. And of course, I mean, we could always go and, you know, add the final bar line um, just like that. And it basically does the same thing. But... Um, that option, oops, let's fix that. Uh, that option will, um, you know, automatically create that final bar line, whether or not you have a final bar line selected for that measure. Now, the thing about this is that with that option checked, if you were to change the actual bar line from the measure attributes window to anything but normal, um, it will override that option. So if I were to choose double here, you'll see that now I get a double bar line. So I can force a different type of bar line on this last bar just by choosing anything other than normal. Of course, final would give you the final bar line anyway, but you can you know, choose solid, you can choose dashed, etc. So basically, um, it's really only if the bar has the normal bar line set to it that the final bar line will get put automatically there if that makes sense whatsoever. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, double bar line before key changes. So this is a relatively new option in Finale. It is somewhat helpful in some circumstances, and it's kind of a nice little thing. It automatically puts a double bar line if you do a key change. So let's say I'm going to change the key at bar 5. We'll make this C major through the end of the piece, transpose down. And you'll see that uh, now we have a new key. There's a uh, courtesy key signature change and a double bar line here. This is awesome. I mean, it's a great time saver. This is sort of a common thing to see before key changes. All is well and good, except there's one major issue that I have with this option is that um, Finale will not discern the difference between an actual key change in the song and a key change caused by a transposition change from an instrument change. <laughs> You following that? So, in this B flat clarinet part here, if I were to let's say change this to, uh, let's go to, I don't know, clarinet and E flat just for the heck of it, um, you'll see that it will change the instrument and it will change the key. However, it will also add a double bar in this case in the middle of the phrase, which is really not appropriate whatsoever. Uh, this is a sort of a big problem, and. Um, Interestingly, if you go ahead and display in concert pitch so that the, you don't actually see the key change, the double bar line goes away. So there's some really weird inconsistencies here. This really should not be the case. The double bar line should not appear before this type of uh, key change. And uh, I kind of wish that Finale at least had another option here that would suppress the double bar line from key changes caused solely by transposition changes from instrument changes. But uh, alas, that doesn't exist. 
Um, so you're kind of stuck with a, a choice here. And for me, because I do a lot of music that does these types of instrument changes and key changes, my templates actually just have this option completely turned off. And when you turn that off, then all of a sudden it's you're not going to draw that double bar line for the instrument change. However, you're not going to get a double bar line automatically for song key changes. This is just sort of what I've chosen to uh, live with, and in this case, I would have to manually add that double bar line, which you know is fine because I really don't want that double bar line on the instrument change. Um, so enough about my soapbox on that. I really wish Finale would fix that. Uh, but it is what it is. And um, from there, let's look at what's next. We have the left bar lines. Uh, now we do have the option of displaying on single staffs, and this will be more relevant if I go to a part that uses a single staff. Let's go there and display on single staffs, and you'll see that you can get that left bar line on the single staff. Now this is not necessarily correct in many people's opinions, so by default, Finale has this turned off. Interestingly, for a long time in Finale, this option was turned on by default, and I think enough people complained about it that they, uh, you know, the default document now turns this off. So uh, that's the display on single staffs. And believe it or not, you have the option to display the left bar line on multiple staffs as well. So if I go back to the score, obviously that option is checked, so you are seeing this left bar line here, but we can actually uncheck that and not see the left bar line <laughs> on every system in a score, which is really strange. I don't really know why you'd want to do that, but um, you know, if you're doing something unique and have to have that option turned off, uh, it's available for you to do. All right, and then the next two options, default style is normal bar line, default style is previous measures right bar line. You have a choice between one or the other. I talked a lot about this in the first video in the bar line section, so uh, I'm not going to touch on this too much, but basically, you know, it's the left bar line is going to always be the normal bar line with this checked. Um, or if you have default style is previous measures right bar line, then uh, whatever the right bar line is, in this case, we have a double bar line here. The uh, first bar of the next system will also have a double bar line if that option is checked. All right. Probably most of the time you want to keep this on uh, default style is normal bar line. All right, and then the uh, the next options have to do with the design of the bar lines themselves. So let me just go over here to this part of the score where I have all of the possible bar lines in this uh, this system here. And uh, so these are fairly straightforward as well. We have heavy line thickness. We can actually change the thickness of the line itself, and the heavy line thickness will apply to not only the thick bar line, but also the thick part of the final bar line. So if I change this to an extreme number here, you'll see what I mean. Just make that 0.08, and you'll see that both of those bar lines got a lot thicker. Um, ditto the uh, thin line thickness. Now this will apply to the regular bar line, the double bar line, the tick bar line, and the, the thickness of the dashed bar line. So if I would change that thin line thickness to something a little more extreme. Let's make this 0.05. Um, what you'll see is all of those thin bar lines get a lot thicker. <laughs> In fact, it got so thick that it uh, swallowed up the space between the double bar line here. So, um, all right, you can just see how that works. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, space between double bar lines. This is literally the amount of white space between the thin and thick bar line of the double bar line here. So we can change that if we want. Um, make that 0 0.08, see what that looks like. Uh, oops, that was a double bar line, so that's this one, not the final bar line. But we have a separate option for the final bar line, 0 0.08, and you can see that it will um, leave a lot more space in that bar line as well. Um, interestingly, I wonder, can these numbers be negative? Let's see, space between double bar lines. Let's try, <laughs> let's try negative uh, 0.08. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I think we can actually have negative numbers, and probably what's happening is the <laughs> the right half of the double bar line is crossing over to the left side. So uh, <laughs> that's weird that it lets you do that. I literally just learned that right now. So there you go. Um, 
Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, dash length and dash space. So by default, these dashed bar lines will give you sort of three dashes here. Uh, you may not like that. You may want to see more. So you can, you know, if you shorten the dash length and the dash space uh, together, essentially you might be able to get, um, you know, a fourth dash in there. So let's try 0.05 and 0.05. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so uh, just by changing both of those values, you can get this dashed bar line to now have uh, four lines on it instead of uh, instead of three. Um, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's, it depends how you want to see this. The three dash looks okay. Um, it's not even actually touching the bottom bar line, which is interesting. So, uh, you know, maybe if you did something slightly larger in the dash length, like 0.07 or something, yeah, you'll get a, a little bit better result. Interesting that Finale sets it up like that. Um, I think I have something set completely differently in my template anyway. So, um, so yeah, so that is, is that everything? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's everything in the document options for bar lines. Uh, you can design your bar lines. You have some uh, choices to make about all and left bar lines, and that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so thanks for watching. Come back for the next lesson. I'm going to do one more lesson on bar lines and finale. Uh, I'm going to talk about independent bar lines, how to put different bar lines on different staves, uh, and also how to stagger bar lines and everything, because that's not exactly native to Finale in, in a certain way, and uh, you know we kind of have to fake that. So uh, come back for that, and I'm going to show you uh, some good methods for doing that. All right, so thanks for watching, and um, I will see you soon on the next video.